Hey everybody, welcome to another Goody Reader video review. This is Marcus. As you can see, we have two Kobo Vox in front of us, or Vox I as it were, and we're here at Kobo CEO headquarters in Toronto, Ontario with uh, Michael Servinius, and he's uh, basically going to just walk us through uh, some of uh, the features. As you can see, this is the main home screen of the Kobo Vox you can see one of the benefits of this new device is that you can get cookbooks, children's books, and graphic novels, comic books. You can see there's an Archie book, a cookbook, as well as a lot of other things on uh, the main screen. You can also see a web browser, Facebook, Gmail, as well as Read Now, My Library, All Apps, Shop Kobo, and Reading Life. You can uh, check it out at, at the top. It is an Android uh, device. You can see that by the time and uh, the pull down menu. There's a back settings and home button, and this is used uh, in lieu of a lot of other devices will have software driven buttons, but these are hardware driven buttons. You can see the form factor, it looks a lot like the original Samsung Galaxy Tab in terms of the 7 inch size. It has an 800 megahertz processor. You can uh, change the background and uh, flip between menus. One of the neat little things is uh, you can see an Android figure there with an actual Kobo uh, shirt and he'll give you uh, hints and prompts. You can uh, see that there is uh, one of nine and uh, he'll help you with uh, any type of things and there's a dedicated Kobo help app which we'll show you in a bit. Widgets and everything like that. You can do a long press and this will allow you to put your own widgets. You can set up a Facebook news feed as well as all the type of standard uh, things that you can see. Uh, Kobo has partnership with uh, radio and this will allow you to get access to a ton of music and content. Uh, globe to go Zinio are two other uh, partners. So uh, Zinio, a radio, and Press Reader are two of uh, Kobo's partners here. And you can see the device looks solid. Yeah, you have on the side there a micro SD card, and uh, this will allow you to enhance the default memory of eight gigs to up to thirty-two gigs. You also saw the volume. There's a single mono speaker right there and you have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack as well as a micro USB. Micro USB is used to charge the device as well as copy ebooks to and from and the audio is not too bad. We'll, we'll test it out in a few minutes. Uh, here is your main uh, library shelf and you can navigate there from just uh, clicking on uh, the main menu. The books that have bookmarks are books that have been opened already so when you click on them again you'll automatically be put to the last page that you read so you have at the top there the library icon the shop and uh, reading life so we're gonna just open up uh, a comic book here and so this is what it looks like pretty high resolution as it were you saw that it did open up very quickly and comic books and things like that we noticed do it. Uh, you can double click and sort of go from pane to pane. Uh, it also supports uh, pinching and zooming as well as you can see here. So this device is going to be killer for comic books. So by default, you can buy a fair number of comic books uh, directly from Kobo, but you can install third-party Android apps like a Droid Comic Viewer and things like that, and that'll give you the ability to load in a CBR, CBZ uh, comic book formats. And I think that comic books actually look better on a 7-inch device because you usually get like the full frames. Here's uh, an advertisement in it for a perennial favorite of ours, Dragon Quest. Uh, we're going to open up uh, another book here and uh, try doing it in landscape mode. So this is an example of a children's book 
and Kobo has recently stocked cookbooks and children's books in its store. So starting on a Friday, they're going to do a firmware uh, update. And with this reader device, and you're going to have access to a ton more content. So it's much like the Barnes & Noble Nook Color store where you only really had a Nook Color at first to have access to it. But you can see there's some hidden little text there. And if you click there, you can actually see words. So it encourages uh, kids to browse to and fro on the device. So this is just an example of a kid's book. You can see that it is interesting and it does encourage like the kids to search around on the page to find hidden text and sometimes in the leaves there'll be messages and things there so sort of like a modern day equivalent of uh, where's Waldo without the Waldo so the home screen unfortunately will not go in a landscape mode but it does have a built-in gyroscope uh, so you only really have to uh, move the device and it'll do it So here's an example of a read-along book. Our read-along books will allow you to uh, read exactly to your to your child if you want to. So it's it's very much uh, like those old read-along records. And me and Michael Servinius, uh, the CEO of Kobo, uh, both grew up reading from those read-along records. So it highlights the words as it talks to you, builds our word correlation skills. And here we go. Color, interactivity, and audio. I'm just going to tap to slow down Gossie because uh, it'll just keep telling us about how cool Gossie is. Yeah. Uh, but you get the idea. And you can do the same kind of thing um, uh, to, uh, to pinch and zoom here. Uh, let me go back and now show you some other kinds of uh, books. So. Uh, color cookbook which is uh, really the full um, fixed layout experience and um, complete with the ability again to uh, zoom in and out um, you know great images of what you're about to uh, what you're about to eat um, so are these books that we're looking at are these all available in the Kobo store yeah, so uh, as of the, the Vox um, heading towards people's front doorsteps, uh, we'll turn on, uh, we'll turn these books on in the Kobo store. Excellent. Yeah. Um, soon we'll make all of these books available on uh, all of our other platforms, which uh, will support the color content and the read-along, the enhanced, uh, the enhanced um, fixed layout um, interface for comics, etc. So if you're using an iOS based device, like iPad, iPhone or Android device, you'll be able to sort of get the, the book experience as yeah. it's intended. We'll be providing updates for Android and for iOS, and certainly before uh, the holiday season that have that entire capability uh, built in. So comics, kids books, uh, you'll have the same great experience uh, that you have on Vox, also on, on other devices. Um, so that is uh, that is cookbooks, and did not hit that. So let me go back and look at some other interesting things we've done in the actual reading experience. Um, where is Boomerang? So Michael Lewis's book's been out for a while, mm -hmm. and um, you know it's a popular read around here. Uh, I'm still uh, still getting started, but I want to <laughs> give you a sense of the Vox, uh, the new new feature for Vox, uh, and that we'll be taking to all of our devices, all of our apps, which is uh, Kobo Pulse. And uh, wait a second here. I know a lot of our viewers are pretty interested in Kobo Pulse. Yeah, so Pulse is um, really all about um, giving you a sense of the life, uh, the life of a book, right? The entire zeitgeist around what people are saying, what people are interacting, how many people around the world are reading it right now, and really capturing that over the lifetime of the book. Um, so Pulse uh, will launch with Vox and will um, will soon after, very quickly, our apps are awaiting approval right now for uh, iOS 
and um, uh, about to go in simultaneously for Android. Uh, but once Pulse is out there, uh, it'll really apply to every book in the uh, Kobo store and all of our apps. I did mention also our e-readers, the, the Kobo Touch, uh, will also uh, get Pulse. So when you're reading, uh, the idea is for the Pulse to be subtle but, but present. And of course, you could turn it off if you uh, don't want it there. Um, and in this case, again, Pulse is not many people using Pulse. It's really our uh, internal office and some of our some of our VIP customers that act as beta users. Um, but every book, every page has a Pulse, and it really ebbs and flows based on the social activity and the number of people reading this book right now. So why don't I tap on it and give you a sense of what the Pulse looks like? So this book um, now. What time is it? It's uh, in the afternoon in um, on the East Coast, and we've got 341 people reading um, Boomerang right now on the Kobo service. Uh, the book's you know I think only a couple of weeks old. It's been read a total front to back uh, 88 times, and you know the commentary, comments, likes, and dislikes. Right now it's pretty small because really it's only us internally using yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Right? But you can see, uh, you know, Gary, This is the thing, a taste of things to come. Exactly. So you can see what the comments are, you can engage, uh, you know, give a comment a thumbs up or thumbs down, respond to the thread or start a new thread. You'll also be able to engage with people uh, that are reading right now uh, should they want uh, to engage with anyone else. Can, uh, are the profiles interactable? Like, can you click on a profile and it'll tell me a little bit about the user or? So, um, so. All of this is based on, on you signing in with Facebook Connect, okay. and um, we'll be rolling out permissions uh, to enable you to connect with people. But yeah. on day one, um, you won't be able to do that. Uh, but it'll be uh, you know in the weeks after. Okay, um, cool. So, and all of this is controllable with uh, privacy settings. Yeah. Um, one of the things because I could see myself if I were to be reading a very excellent book and I saw a profile of a few cutie pies. I yeah, would be exactly. Pretty tempted to be like, hey, yeah. how are you doing? Yeah, you know? exactly. So you, <laughs> so <laughs> privacy settings for sure, and um, you know the idea is that that Vox, uh, you know Vox is the lead with Pulse, and we'll bring it to all of our other experiences. You know, you can also give a page, uh, a page of a book, a you know thumbs up or thumbs down, and comment right from within the page, and all of that gets uh, reflected with other, um, you know, other people reading or other people accessing the pulse. And the more activity there is, the more you'll see, um, you know, the pulse uh, glow, um, uh, glow red and be a little. Oh, little so that's bigger. what that is on the yeah, yeah. bottom of the screen there. Let's right, see if I can get to a page that's got a lot of pulse. Yeah, these are all, it's all pretty much the same right now just because we're, uh, we haven't launched it publicly. But once you see our, you know, millions of users having access to this, you'll see a lot of variability in, in Pulse. Um, so uh, let me show you actually. So Steve, the new Steve Jobs biography came out yesterday. And, um, you know, the number of people reading that uh, today is, uh, I bet a lot higher than a Michael Lewis's Boomerang. Yeah, it's, it's already like the top in the top thirteen of all all time selling books in two thousand eleven. So thirteen hundred people are reading it right now. Wow. I don't know how, and that's this hour, and so this is constantly. And this is refreshed. just still like internally and like yeah. not really, not really. It's uh, amazing. Yeah. Ever like. Everybody's reading it is what that tells you. Yeah. Uh, and you know we'll we'll see. You know I'm sure this number will be you know ten times that by next week. Um, so. So one kind of question I have yeah. about Pulse, it, I saw uh, users are able to leave comments. Do you have any type of moderation system? So if users are, you know, any, you know what it's like with internet trolls and stuff. Sometimes you know people are just looking for fights or arguments. Yeah. Um, how do you how are you how do you plan on dealing with people that leave comments that might offend other users? So so largely we're going to um, uh, enable users to self police with thumbs up and thumbs down. Yeah. Um, on comments and sort of like YouTube and sort exactly. of what they do there. Yeah. I okay. mean, given the scale, I mean, with millions of users, yeah. uh, it's, <laughs> it'd be you impossible. Know, it'd be impossible. We will also have some, you know, super moderators. Yeah. That will pay attention and uh, be monitoring the service, but users have the ability to thumbs up, thumbs down uh, themselves. Excellent. Um, uh, what else can I show you here? Let's uh, uh, let's go into my, you know, my RDO. Let's, what do we got here? The Black Eyed Peas. Um, 
So pretty good for a, uh, a neatly tucked in speaker. Yeah. And you know, with RDO you can turn the volume down. With RDO you can uh, download books and keep them resident. And of course you can access your library from the cloud on many other devices, get social recommendations, um, and uh, and you know really acts as a massive catalog. So you get seven days free when you start, and if you uh, if you want to sign up, it's either four ninety nine or nine ninety nine a month, based depending on your pretty package. pretty low costs. Yeah, yeah, pretty amazing. I mean, uh, I think of what I spend on music. Uh, that's a great deal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I can also. Uh, oops, well, we just did audio. Sorry about that. Uh, uh, Press Reader, our newspaper partner, uh, you know, also a Canadian company, I believe. Excellent. Uh, yeah, they've got thousands of uh, newspapers. I think the largest newspaper catalog in the world. Wow. Uh, let's take a uh, fine bit of journalism, the New York Post, and uh, take a look. <laughs> 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 I did not plan that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the uh, let's go to another. It's like I was almost expecting TMZ there. <laughs> yeah. <for a> <laughs> the Toronto Star. Uh, there we go. Avril Lavigne, fine, uh, <laughs> fine, uh, fine Canadian, Canadian songstress. Sing. Exactly. So you get the full newspaper, and uh, you know you can. Um, what am I doing there? There we go. So you get the full newspaper, and you can dive in, change your orientation, zoom in, etc. So are these newspapers in EPUB or PDF format? Um, these are in, um, I believe, PDF format, um, and these are um, basically fully under the control of the, the newspapers. Yeah, okay. And the press display app, um, you know, provides a great rendering of them. Yeah, it's sort of like when we, we kind of spoke with Zinio and a lot of these companies, they, uh, you know, provide publishers with tools so you get, like, the best experience, basically, with your, with your magazines exactly. and newspapers. Exactly. They give them a whole set of yeah, uh, whole set of the newspapers tools. as you were pinching and zooming very snappy and you don't yeah. really see that in a lot of you know especially like just straight PDFs or whatever but these are optimized PDFs exactly so Zinio is also on here and I've got uh, you know a series of, uh, of magazines uh, I don't think I've actually set up my Zinio on this device probably on the other one uh, but it's, a, it's also it looks great and you've got thousands of magazines in fact you get um, you get 12 free magazines um, that you can you can try out right away. Um, what else can I show you? Let me show you what video looks like. Um, give you uh, uh, got a hockey game, of course, the Toronto Maple Leafs, because uh, we're here in Toronto. Um, let me turn up the volume. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you get a get an appreciation for the video and audio quality. Not too bad. What's yeah. uh, what's the resolution? In terms of like, is it 720, 480? Do you know? It's uh, 600, uh, so 1024 by 600. That's pretty yeah. fine. Um, so you know, for movie watching, video watching, YouTube, etc., it's uh, it's a pretty uh, great experience. Yeah. Um, so let me pause that. Uh, oops. What else do we got? Uh, of course, you can load in your own, uh, you know, music library, uh, DRM free uh, music and MP3s. Do you have uh, Reading Life on here? Oh yeah, absolutely. Let me, let's, uh, let's check that out. So I can access it right from the home screen and just tap on Reading Life, and uh, now you'll see my uh, embarrassingly my stats, <laughs> which have not been very high in the last. Uh, uh, I've only spent 22 minutes reading the Steve Jobs book. Um, well, with a product launch, I'll give you a pass. Yeah, I've turned almost 4,000 pages, you know, 156 pages per hour on average. Uh, let's see what my awards are. I've got some pretty good awards. I actually, I'm not quite at the juggernaut, which was 10,000, once you read 10,000 pages. Um, you can actually, I, I, I met with someone today that has read 50,000 pages. Oh. He's a hardcore uh, Kobo user. Um, what's a good he one? is the juggernaut. Fully loaded. Uh, oh, that's when I add documents uh, off the wall. Uh, basically, uh, when, I'm, when I'm sharing with friends on my wall. And uh, where's Better? Better in Bed is always a popular one. Oh, there's the Night Rider. 
uh, for, for reading those. books at night, right? <laughs> yeah. I have that one. Yeah. Uh, the Deep Thinker, I think, is for, um, uh, well, just for making notes. Uh, you know, it's one of those training awards and yeah. as you get to learn how to use the experience. Total Recall uh, for rereading our favorite book. Um, I think, what was it? Uh, might have been Snow Crash, uh, Neil Stevenson. Oh, uh, which is I'm a, a big favorite. fan of that, and that yeah. in the Diamond Age. Yeah, I actually, uh, I just downloaded uh, uh, his latest. Uh, the, how do you say it? Do you it's say misspelled, it? Yeah, right? it's, it's Read Me, or, but it's spelled Reamed. Yeah, yeah. I know Am uh, Amazon and a bunch of companies pulled it from their shelves because oh, yeah. like, users were complaining about spelling mistakes, but exactly. it's, that was like the, the essence of it. So I get a whole bunch of other Android apps on here, like my calendar, my contacts. Of course, I have access to uh, my email also. Uh, pretty important to launch a tablet to, uh, to have email. Yeah. And, um, and then, you know, Facebook, the new HTML5 app, the new Twitter uh, HTML5 app as well. Um, uh, now, is this the Kobo HTML5 app? No, the Kobo HTML5 app is uh, coming soon. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, I think you're going to see a, uh, some exciting new stuff, uh, new parts of the experience in, in that app. Uh, so um, we'll look forward to uh, sharing that with you when it's ready. Excellent. Uh, there's also an Ask Kobo uh, experience where you can uh, dive in and just ask a natural language question uh, about your box or anything to do with Kobo. Um, and there's some commonly uh, commonly asked questions. So you just type it in, or do, can you talk yeah. to it? Uh, you can't talk to it, uh, not yet. But uh, let me see. Um, uh, how? Let's see if I can get something. How to do? Look at that. Oh, and you see a bunch yeah. of. How do I get a neat. book deleted from my library? How do you do that? Uh, that's pretty actually excellent that you have like all these sort of mini facts and tutorials because yeah. it's a lot of common questions that users will have. Exactly. So, you know, this is a great example. How do I get a book back that I deleted from my library? Some pretty simple uh, instructions on how to do it. Did we answer your question? Thumbs up or thumbs down? We've been seeing a, a response, a thumbs up rate on the first question of like 90 to 95 percent. Uh, which is great, yeah. and uh, you know, usually have a, f a few points higher on the second question. So uh, that's another key part of the experience. Um, I haven't talked about. Ooh, I'm running out of. I've been going all day on this thing. So <laughs> it's five o'clock, and I've been going since like seven a.m. So uh, we're doing pretty good for, for better battery. life, yeah. And that's with Wi-Fi, and even you know, videos and web yeah, and exactly. everything. Um, so what can users expect out of the app market that you have? I know people, you know, installing apps is something that they're really into. So pretty wide range of categories, um, um, you know, lots of games, you know, social apps, uh, you know, all the typical categories, right? Finance, food apps like Urban Spoon, WebMD for health, you know, the uh, Google and other search related apps. Uh, maps, of course, uh, Shazam for music, other news apps like CNN. Uh, so a pretty uh, wide collection, and you know these are optimized to work for this uh, this seven inch uh, seven inch screen. If a user wanted to, would they be able to, you know, say load their own APK file on oh, there? Yeah. Or, oh okay. yeah, it's totally open, so they can do that, and they can also go and get the Android Marketplace um, and load that if they want as well. I think a lot of our users would be happy just uh, going through the list that uh, is optimized for this device. Yeah, oh, for sure. But uh, we don't restrict people. They can do whatever, they, whatever they'd like. And I approve of that because so yeah. many uh, ecosystems kind of lock you into, like, this is what you, this is all you're going to get. Yeah. You know, I, I like the fact that you guys were kind of allowing users to... Keep it open. It's yeah. a core part of our philosophy. We want people to read freely. Uh, we also have, you know, our same sort of... Um, uh, screen savers uh, whoops, that give you uh, you know give you a Quotes. famous quote. You can also customize this to make it whatever you'd like. Um, and I think we're about to lose power here. <laughs> uh, I'm actually I'm blown away because we're we report over seven hours, um, yeah. and I've been going since uh, like seven a.m. So <laughs> we're clearly doing better than that. Um, You're a trooper. Yeah. So that's the new Kobo Vox, and you know it's got our signature quilted back now in a uh, new uh, pattern, and uh, the Kobo logo on the back, 
And one of the things that we did with, uh, with the new Vox is we wanted to have a little fun with the colors. You know, it's something we've always done with our other e-readers. Mm -hmm. um, but this time we decided to, you know, add a strip of color on the band. And uh, we offer, you know, black, uh, this um, uh, icy blue. Uh, we offer a lime green and a hot pink. Uh, so what's surprising is so far, I'll tell you this about pre-orders. So normally, uh, you know, black is 80 to 90% of, of purchases in most consumer electronics categories yeah uh, black has been way less than uh, 50 percent really it's the colors that are winning so more you know, options really yeah, right yeah and you know it's a color device it's fun and you know a lot of people are buying them as gifts for friends or or you know even younger readers uh teens to play you know uh, with comics and the color experience that we have so a little hit of color is uh is pretty popular Excellent. Okay, well, we've just been talking to Michael Serbinius, CEO of Kobo, and he's just showed us off the new Kobo box.